So, what we now heard was about AI in general. Uh, we talked about AI in the economy and the problems that might arise. But what we do here at the Reed Co-op is use AI for a very specific purpose. We're using it to unlock the history. So the question that we're trying to discuss now is, is AI the key to history? And I think we have to switch on the microphones and then we can start with the discussion. Okay, uh, I hope mine's working. Uh, it's a bit on the quiet side, is it? Yeah, Perfect. now it's better. Thanks a lot. Yes, um, yeah, welcome to this uh, panel discussion. We also wanted to have a somewhat um, interactive uh, part here during the first day uh, and the plenary session here. And we thought it would be really nice to talk to the experts in their fields, both from application of AI in the digital humanities or social sciences and or social sciences, um, yeah, experts on the technology uh, itself, and uh, also mm, someone who is sort of um, a little bit in between those areas. So uh, I have the great pleasure to uh, yeah, present uh, the panelists. Uh, the first panelist to my right here is Dr. Annemieke Romain. She's an early modernist, so a historian, uh, and works on legal sources and in the area of the, the digital humanities. She works at the Hagens Institute in Amsterdam and the Freie Universiteit Amsterdam and frequently provides training workshops for uh, transcribers. You might know her from there. And she's a long-standing and often skeptical friend of transcribers, and we really appreciate uh, the skepticism and uh, the candor, uh, obviously, and this is also why you're on this panel here today. Then, uh, at the far end of the panel, we have uh, Dominique Delandre. She's a full professor of history um, at the history department at, uh, of the University of Montreal. Uh, has taught European and North American early modern history uh, since 1992. So, also a very um, uh, experienced member of the scientific community. And she works on material from uh, judiciary and uh, civil archives and researches, uh, especially the women and their men uh, who made Montreal's history, especially in the 17th century. So someone from the area of applying uh, AI in the field as well. Then we have uh, Professor Patrick Glauner, who uh, Matthias already uh, introduced. Uh, yeah, I'll just go uh, over this again quickly. He's a full professor of intel uh, artificial intelligence at the Degendorf uh, Institute of Technology in Bavaria, Germany. And besides academia, uh, he's founder and CEO of his uh, company Skyrocket AI, a, co a consulting, AI consulting firm. He's an expert witness, as we've seen, uh, to uh, many governments and institutions, uh, and yeah, the, an expert in the field of uh, the actual technology, we could say. And then, uh, last but definitely not least, Dr. Günther Mühlberger, the chairman of the board of our cooperative. Uh, he's a Germanist by training. For more than 20 years now, he has advanced digitization and digitalization agendas here at the University of Innsbruck. Uh, and he has coordinated the REIT project, um, during which a large uh, part of the development of transcribers happened. And he also initiated the founding of the REIT cooperative and now is chairman of the board. So, uh, yeah, digital humanities or humanities background and a very strong focus on digitization and digitalization. So we have a very nice uh, spectrum of both application and expertise uh, in uh, the field of AI. Uh, and who could unfortunately not be here is Melissa Terras, uh, our third board member. I'll say a couple of words about Melissa as well. She is a professor of digital uh, cultural heritage at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, there at the College of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences. 
and uh, her research interests are uh, digitization of cultural heritage, uh, technology uh, or technological pr procedures and their impact. And yeah, she was really crushed not to be able to be here and we really wish her well. So uh, let's start discussing uh, today's question, is AI the key to history? So this is a question that maybe doesn't come up that often uh, during AI discussions, so we mainly hear uh, about um, the medical sciences, for example, or uh, autonomous cars, robotics, um, yeah, anything you like. But uh, history is uh, not yeah, that much in uh, the limelight when it comes to artificial intelligence. So uh, I've prepared a couple of questions. Um, the first one I'd like to ask is, um, yeah, we keep hearing more and more uh, that AI can do things maybe better than humans, especially during uh, Professor Glauner's talk. Um, we've seen what AI can really do today. And my question is, um, can it really do a better job? And do you think it can do in uh, non-exact sciences, such as the digital humanities, or the humanities in general, to which also history belongs? Um, Professor Glauner, what do you think? Well, th thank you very much for the question. Uh, yes, AI can do better than humans, but we always need a good ground roof, and I think that's a challenge in every science. So you need a good database, and if the database is wrong or biased, finally you will also make wrong predictions. I see a lot of potential in the humanities and, in, for example, in history, like um, you talked today about search and all of those advanced search uh, features you wish to have, AI will be key to that. So we have this you know, exponential amount or exponentially growing amount of data around us and the only way we can keep track of it is search. And there's so much historic data out there that is not uh, digitized yet um, and we don't have enough experts to read these old characters and to type them into a computer. So an AI is certainly very, very helpful to do this. But an AI can also help, for example, to um, restore images or text that is partially broken. Maybe, you know, part of a page got cut off or an image got partially damaged, and maybe the AI can help us to complete that information. Um, there's obviously always some uncertainty included. Humans make mistakes, and so does an AI, but the AI can allow us to do all of this much faster, much better potentially, and humans can finally still take a final look at it and try to improve it. And what do you think about the room of interpretation that often exists in the historical sciences? That's one of the problems, I think, um, uh, also why I'm asking these questions. Sometimes it's difficult for humans to decide, um, is this uh, a correct representation of the historical facts? Can this really be re uh, reduced to, to solid ground truth, do you think? Well, maybe the AI could could propose different scenarios and could also give an explanation why the AI has come to that conclusion. And then maybe experts can look at that explanation and wonder, does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, because uh, I think one uh, problem that AI has maybe, or that it doesn't do such a good job of yet, is uh, explaining things to, to humans. So it's quite good at providing answers, I think, and uh, speeding up decision making but really getting a point across um, that's maybe still a bit in in the future um, maybe let's move on to 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 the experts uh, on this this actual field uh, history um, maybe Annemieke do you think uh, AI could be a historian and could it be a better historian than a human um, well, here I'm very skeptical, but that's where, why you asked me. Um, so yes, artificial intelligence can help us understand the data, but it can't do interpretations, because we as uh, historians can't provide ground truth for the interpretation. We can say someone was born then and someone died then, that's quite obvious, but we can't have the computer interpret what an impact someone had. That's something that's, uh, um, well, you, you have a humanistic circle 
uh, for that. And uh, by reading a lot, uh, uh, and sure, the, the computer can uh, deal with a lot of information, but it can't tell for now how much uh, of that information is relevant. And um, if you want to be able to propose a new vision, um, basically ground truth would train the computer to come up with traditional visions because that's what it would hypothetically be trained with. But if you uh, were to come up with an alternative view, um, that wouldn't then, uh, that would not count as ground truth, and, but it would still be an interpretation of history. And then I'm not talking about uh, extremist views or uh, Holocaust deniers uh, or these kind of things, but if I look at my own research to 17th century uh, political uh, structures in Germany and France, um, I came up with a different interpretation than was commonly used, and um, that would not be something the computer would come up with, simply because it's not part of the, the curriculum. So mm -hmm. with the humanistic <clears throat> circle, you keep thinking about what is going on, you keep reinterpreting, you might come up with comparisons to different areas, um, and you as a human can make connections that, um, that you can't feed the computer yet as being a ground truth, and if you do, then you would have so many diverse ideas that the computer couldn't make sense out of it because, well, what is true then? Maybe let's try to, to um, get some, some other answers from the, from the spectrum. Maybe Professor Glauner again, do you really think the AI cannot do that? For example, let me um, uh, use a, a very simple uh, example here, maybe one that ev uh, everyone can understand. Why did Napoleon invade Russia? Is, are the common explanations that are given the true ones, or is it just a matter of not having enough data that the interpretations are the ones that they are currently? What do you think? How would you re respond to, to, to this view? Well, computers and AIs obviously give us the opportunity to gather a lot of information and analyze it. That's something a human could not do in his or her lifetime. And, and that's obviously a huge opportunity. Yes, the AI is trained on certain data. Nonetheless, there is some creativity now in, in these models. Um, and the AI could also possibly check if things we see as the crown truth, if they're actually conclusive by adding more information. So I see that as a huge opportunity. But yeah, the AI will not ultimately decide about history. We should never let an AI to decide ultimately such very serious things. Same in healthcare. We don't want an AI to ultimately decide if I'm sick or not. It should always provide advice to experts and explanations, and they will make the final discussion. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a very uh, interesting um, view, I think, because uh, I think one uh, thing that uh, is also um, very uh, discussed very hotly at times is what should we do with, with AI and what should AI do, not just what can it do. And this is also maybe where China is a bit uh, ahead of us uh, with the decision what it should do and they, they let it do more, we could say. Um, so, in, in, in the Western tradition, we are maybe thinking a bit more about um, what it should do. Um, in, in that connection, maybe let's hear from another um, uh, expert from the historical domain. Um, uh, Dominique, what is your working relationship with AI? How would you say you collaborate with AI? Because we've just heard um, AI can be a tool or should be a tool. What do you think? Should it be a tool or should it also be um, a part of the conversation? So should it get its own voice or should it really be just a tool? Actually, I feel... Oops. I feel... Oh. Is it switched on? Yeah. Uh, I feel a, a little bit like an imposter to be among you because uh, I'm a user-friendly of Transcribus. I, and by the fact that, that I just uh, arrived in, in front of um, very difficult uh, 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 handwriting to decipher, and uh, I realized that uh, Transcribus could help me to uh, teach 
this uh, paleography, very hard, uh, and uh, even for me to, to be able to recognize this handwriting and everything. So I, I'm not sure that AI is the key to interpretation of history, but AI is, is a, a tool, and it serves a real revolution that is going on in the treatment of the archives. And that's why we need to think about this revolution and all the little details that you were talking about. And so, yes, um, it, it's uh, changing profoundly the way we are reconstructing the past, of course. I don't need to spend five years of my life writing my thesis about 10 years of the political thought of Napoleon just before he invaded Russia, you know, because the, 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 the amount of paper to read is huge and uh, uh, to, to find something new also. So now I can go on 300 years of manuscript and find not it's no, no more a sample, how do you, uh, would we say that? We, we're not working with samples, we're mm -hmm. working exhaustively with the search. And with our knowledge of historian, we, we, all, we'll, we'll always need paleo paleographers, historian, to be able to interpret what the data are uh, offering us. Um, what I find fantastic is also the sharing of collect collection. To be able to, to vanquish the, um, the aloneness of our wor work and uh, to be able to be ubiquitous, uh, to be in Paris or Rome archives in being in my own office. And this has, has uh, changed completely the work that we are doing. Um, and especially this collaborative way of doing things, like for example, you could come on in my collection and just the, the one function very important in transcribus is the unclear. <laughs> so you can check the unclear and you can add and like a wiki thing, you can work together. So this is very, very so, important. Um, so um, if I understand this correctly, you see it more as a tool. It's a tool, but it's a techno-social tool. Okay, yeah, so it combines um, yeah, the social potential of the members of the scientific community, mm -hmm. is, is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, yeah, let's maybe move uh, a little bit between the, the poles of the spectrum that we have here today. Um, Günther, uh, a question for you um, that is a bit in the vein of what we've just heard. Uh, you have managed a uh, digitization and digitalization group for more than 20 years now. And for about half that time, now AI has played an important role for this. Uh, how realistic do you think uh, that in the future the, the credo in, in the humanities will be um, to, to uh, play on a theme by uh, President uh, John F. Kennedy, that the credo will be, ask not what AI can do for you, but what you can do for AI. And I know this is a question that's, that's very interesting for you, because you, your answer is maybe not that clear-cut as we, what we've heard so far. Well, my spontaneous answer would be... Use the microphone, please. Excuse me. My spontaneous answer would be, I have done enough for the AI. <laughs> <laughs> but it pays back, so that's, that's definitely. Um, I think for me, it's, it's, it's uh, as you said, uh, you need to solve a problem. Yeah, and that's, that's the mission. Uh, and um, I, I just can say the mission to, um, to solve the problem of text recognition, that's 25 years old when I discovered it in my, in my PhD thesis. I wanted to, uh, not to read 4,000 letters of Johann Wolfgang of Goethe. I just wanted to search for Nazism. That's it. Yeah. And this was uh, really um, to solve the problem. And uh, to solve the problem of searching, I'm sure that AI will play a big role there. Um, but we have to understand that there is a, a problem with searching. Yeah? And that it is not enough 
to say, well, yes, you can search. Of course, it's an improvement, but, uh, but we want to, see, to have more, and we, we need this kind of, of vision to say, what do we want? And in the ideal case, I, I would expect that AI can do a lot. It can be a tool, but it can also be a dialogue partner. Yeah? I'm sure, I, if, if, if I, I don't read too many books, I have to confess, but um, I remember very well reading a, a, a real standard book about the biography of Johann Wolfgang from Goethe, of Goethe. So, um, and it had, I don't know, 1,000 uh, footnotes. And, and my thinking was, if all the footnotes are digitized, you would get a kind of network yeah, uh, with the research literature and connect this with the sources of uh, what, what they are talking about. I mean, that's a kind of knowledge I never could reach in my life, um, but the computer can do and, and AI can do. And then to get some suggestions, as we saw the nice image with the chairs from you, with the, I had a closer look to some of the chairs and I thought, oh, many of them are really ugly. Yeah, they, are, they, look, they look nice at the beginning if you look at it, but if you look from, from the view, would you buy it? Well, I'm not sure. But there are all, also probably one out of 10 or one out of 50, which is great, which is a new idea, yeah? or which is a nice image. And, and the same would happen with, um, with um, mm -hmm. uh, okay. um, a personal research assistant or whatever you yeah. would call it. It would give you new ideas and you would say, well, makes sense or not. So, okay, so you would see a somewhat more independent role uh, for AI in the conversation as, of, as opposed to just being uh, a better search solution. Yeah, I think the, 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 there are no limits. There are no limits, and, okay. and it must be clear yeah. that, that there is no difference, actually, between the learning of machines and our learning. It's, mm -hmm. it's just a, a different um, a physical basis, but, but the principles are very similar. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, uh, continuing this uh, line of thought, uh, if we allow AI to become part of the conversation, um, I think there may be new uh, dangers arising uh, because I think when you uh, let AI be a part of the conversation about history, there uh, are some things that might um, yeah, be problematic. Uh, for example, think of deepfakes. That's AI too. So AI can write history as well as interpret it already um, or yeah history could be a source of knowledge to learn about humanity and to defeat humanity what do you think about these dangers professor glauner how far away are we from a terminator scenario that elon musk often often evokes well, I think the fear of a out-of-control AI is exaggerated. There's a lot of sci-fi around it, and I also like Star Trek and Terminator. I know all of that is really cool. Uh, but a very famous AI researcher named Andrew Eng, he was the founder of Coursera and started all these online courses about AI. He was a professor at Stanford. He was asked to assess how far we are in AI and if that scenario is anywhere near. And I think he gave a really good explanation, so I want to tell you that. He said, well, in AI we have made progress and we have some next steps we want to do. And he compares this to space. So there are researchers and then NASA is thinking about sending humans to the Mars at some point in the next few decades. There are maybe some researchers already thinking about how to colonize Mars in the distant future. So in AI, we also have some plans what we could do sometime in the future. But he said he cannot really prevent AI from turning evil because we are too far away. Like in space, no one is so far thinking about how to combat or handle 
overpopulation on Mars, because it's just too far away. We first need to make a lot of steps there, and that's what Andrew said, that he cannot productively avoid it. He's working on AI, shipping code, adding value. Obviously, those scenarios, at some point, they may become relevant, but we're just too far away. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's a bit reassuring. I'm not sure I believe it, but <laughs> let's see what the next five years even uh, br will bring. Um, yeah, um, maybe let's have uh, some questions from the audience, if there are any. Lucia, <laughs> is there someone who could lend Lucia a microphone? Yeah, you'll get a microphone in a second. I, I really... Is it switched on? I, I really don't like the microphone, but anyway. Uh, Günther, uh, allow me to disagree with you uh, about, uh, you say, we are nearly close to the end of uh, the technology for tax recognition because I agree with, uh, may I call you Patrick? Or because, uh, a Glauner. I am more on his opinion and that's what I would like to ask. Uh, uh, can the tax recognition also helps us, help us with lost information? And then here I'm thinking that's a problem I'm dealing with is our documents that the time or the whatever ate some words, documents that survived poorly, the teeth of time, or like the Dutch would say, the thunder van tijd. And so some documents are pretty much damaged, but we could read still. It's not that they are completely destroyed. So, for example, when you miss uh, words because of some bug ate, can we train enough data so that we can fill in the gaps? That's my question, because then the information is lost. Or do I need to express myself in another way? Do I, I make any sense? You understand, understood the gist of the question? Gunther, yeah, maybe I think it's we best all, to be we all have seen um, the example from Google where they added some text to manuscripts, I think, from Israel or, or so. So the idea is rather clear to predict what could be there, or maybe if it is a very faint and hard to read thing to also somehow predict what could. Yeah, I think it's Project Ithaca that you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, That's so yes, I'm sure there are, there are I, I didn't want to say that there are no improvements, uh, but, but if you look at some cycles, you see that sometimes you have a really steep progress and then it's becoming a bit uh, uh, lower. Okay, uh, let's maybe have one more question from the audience, if there is any. If you would like to ask the experts, they're here for you now, but you'll probably get the chance later on as well. So if there are <clears throat> no more questions from the audience, uh, let's maybe conclude uh, with a very short uh, round of uh, the one question that we came here to discuss and an answer of, by each of you. Um, maybe try to limit it to two sentences. I'll be counting. <laughs> so, uh, Dominique, is AI the key to history? AI is not replacing the historian, but the human is in the, at the basis of AI. Okay, Professor Gana. Well, I absolutely agree. AI is not about replacing people, it's about supporting people, make sure we have a better life and we don't want to be out of business eventually. And there are huge potentials of AI that are yet to be unlocked. Günther? Yeah, I'm sure that uh, the journey just began. Okay, short and sweet. <laughs> that was one sentence. You would have one to go if you'd like. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Annemieke? Well, I, I certainly believe that it can be supportive of uh, any field and uh, let's keep the people in the loop. Okay, great. And uh, what it is sure to be helping us in the future is uh, unlocking history. And that's what the motto of our cooperative is. So let's unlock history together. 
Good, thank you, dear panelists, and I'll hand back to Matthias. Thank you very much. <laughs>